There's one. There's one. Oh yeah, that's a nice large mouth. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. That is what I'm looking for. Oh, and they're starting to bust. They're starting to bust Shad. Get up here. <laughs> Folks, today we're at Lake Pleasant. I gotta get out there where they're busting. Look at that fish. Nice fish, huh? <laughs> Let me get my bait back out there real fast. When they start busting like that, you want to be in the thick of them for sure. I'm throwing an underspin. And, uh, you know, in the afternoon when these fish quit blasting on top, a lot of times you know the shad are still there, everything's still going on, and you can catch them on little swim baits or something down a little bit deeper. I opted with the little blade because we have a little bit of wind. And uh, that little underspin can really make the difference sometimes in the middle of the day when the fish go just a tad bit deeper for these fish, for these shad, and you got that little blade on the front of it. And uh, I got my Rico tied up and a few things tied up, a little swim bait. But in all honesty, I wanna go down the bank. I'm gonna pull off the, the real shallow stuff. I can see the lake's pretty clear and uh, I can see the points and all that stuff. And I'll just slow roll this bait through there and see if we can't get some fish to, to come up for this. Oh, there was a big one right there, a big one. And look, my bait's all messed up. Look at that. Okay, so this is what I'm throwing. It's a little rage swimmer. I'm gonna have to put a new one on. Little rage swimmer, looks like a shad. I'm using a half ounce because I want to get it down there, okay? Plus I want to be able to reel it fast if I have to and give it some action and motion and let it fall and all that. But look at that little tiny blade. That little tiny blade swims underneath this and the, the bass just crush this bait. It can be a lot of fun to throw, throw it on like 12 pound test line and uh, get down there and throw that. I got to put another one of these on that was a nice fish that followed it up. Another, that was, that was a real nice fish that followed it up. Let's see. I think the reason why he didn't hit it is because that bait was so out of whack. Let's see if I can find another one. These baits right here, my friend, are the baits. It's a 3.75 three inch, okay? Little shad colored swimmer. That's what I'm throwing. And I'm gonna, how I hook this up, and it's a lot of fun. How I hook this up is it's got little grooves in it. You can see the little grooves. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure the tail is down when I bring it up. So I'm gonna bring it up, I'm gonna feed it on there, I'm gonna bring it right through the middle, right through that, that spot, I'm gonna poke it right up there. Now you can use a little super glue or something to hold it on there if you wanted to. A lot of times you get quite a few fish out of that, but that's it right there. What a fun bait to throw, and you just slow roll it. I just had another fish come up and, and nip at it, and I'll throw it out there. You know the shad are in the area, though. This morning, shad were all over the area, and uh, so what I'm gonna do is just back out a little bit, and you can see the fish in 15, 16, 20 foot of water. They're down there. They're just not hitting the surface too much. Once in a while, you'll see one pop. And you can take a, a Rico or something or th throw it in the backs of pockets at times and catch them. Uh, the wind blowing like this a little bit, I wanted to try something with a little blade on it. And just let it fall to the bottom and slow roll it. Those big fish will be down there. You'll catch a lot of those little fish sometimes that are up busting. Those big fish will be underneath. Ah, oh, it just got slammed. Just got slammed. I think I got him. I can't reel fast enough. <laughs> He's a little guy. Oh, he comes off. That's okay, that's okay. We know they're done. <laughs> and they'll bite it multiple times. And it's a lot of fun, a lot of fun. I couldn't hardly catch up to that fish. Let it fall to the bottom a little bit. And I, like I said, what allows me to work this bait so fun is I can actually variate my, my speed on this as well. As long as that little blade's turning down there, I can speed it up and then drop it down a little bit and it'll fall like a rock with that half ounce weight on there. You can throw it with a smaller weight, but I like to try to get it down there toward the bottom where they're at. 
and uh, had a couple follow it right there. And what's really cool about the half ounce is you can make really, really long casts with it. And it's not a hard bait to work. You roll it just like you would a spinner bait. You know, let it fall to the bottom. This Taipan Elite Series rod that I'm throwing, it's a medium action rod. And you could go with medium heavy, medium, um, but I like something with some backbone to it, but it's gotta have enough, because they'll sling these baits a lot of times, and I wanna be able to fight the fish, as long as it's got a good backbone to it, and a tip that, that has a little bit of variance to it, it helps. Because they gotta inhale this whole bait, you know? And it's really got an ultra sharp hook on it, so it's not a thick hook like a spinnerbait hook, but still, you wanna be able to fight the fish, get that bait hooked up. Come on, baby. And just slow roll it. Now, you can see all these fish on the graph right now down there. I mean, they're down there in 23 foot of water. Some of those are stripers. And once in a while, I'll just pop the rod tip to make sure that blade's turning. You know, if these bass are chasing shad, which is pretty much what I think they're doing, then you want to throw something that's going to catch them and move out a little bit during the afternoon. And then late afternoon, early morning, they'll push back up in. And there's times throughout the day they may push back up in there, and then you got to have all your shallow stuff ready to go. There's one. Oh, yeah. Right off that point. Oh! Oh, that was a good one, and there was another one with him. Another one with him. Oh, my goodness. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Another one just as big with him. Hit me right on the point, and I let him jump. That underspin will catch him, but boy, they jump, and you are in trouble. There's one right off that point where the last one was, and it's a good one. <laughs> I'm keeping that one down. Right off that point. Oh, that's a good fish. Yeah, all right, that's what I'm talking about, son. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's a Lake Pleasant bass you're looking for. Fishing the points with that little underspin. When that wind gets to kicking a little bit and they're not busting on top, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for areas with a little chunk rock on it where they can push them shad up. And, uh, you know, that had a little shade on it, but the main thing is getting into areas and hitting those points like that. And you're coming right off the point. And the best thing you could do if you can is parallel the point. Wind blew us off that little spot, but we caught him right off the point there, paralleling it. And, uh, you know, we're sitting out here in deep water, so that, that point there is gonna be, have a nice little drop off to it. Just slow roll it off those points. Man, that makes for a lot of fun when you can kind of figure the fish out in the afternoon. You have a blast in the morning till about 11 o'clock or something like that, say on top water, and fish are busting. And then, you know, you come out late afternoon like we did today and, and go, okay, well, we know the fish were blasting early in the morning from the friends we talked to, things going on. So, uh, we'll wait for them to fire up, but until they fire up, we can have all that good fun find something that we can catch some bigger, get some bigger bites on, you know? And uh, this little underspin does it. It's an awesome little bait. There's not a whole lot, like I said, to throw on it. It's kind of like throwing a spinner bait. I'm slow rolling it. I'm using a fast retrieve ratio reel, but I'm still reeling it slow and uh, letting it almost get to bottom, if not touch bottom, you know, a little bit. Get down there where those bigger fish are. I like the shade, we'll hit a little bit of the shade, but so far off the points is where we're getting them. We lost that one big fish off a point, we just caught that one off a point. So you kind of, one, one's a fluke, two could be a pattern. And uh, so we'll go down and see if we can get something going until these fish fire up. I like to also use shade as, as an edge line. Those bass will get in that shade and they'll It'll hit almost as soon as it comes out of that shade if they're using it. For ambush areas, they'll hide in that shade, use it as a line. Anything like that will work really good. 
But if we know they're busting shad, that's one of the reasons I wanted to go to this bait was because, you know, not a lot of folks use that particular bait. And it's a lot of fun to throw. You can get it in quarter ounce. It's a fish head is what that is. You can get it in a quarter ounce. You got to make sure whatever underspin that you get, you get one that's got a good swivel on it that makes sure that that blade's constantly turning. You know, I, I've, I've pulled some up that just don't turn, you know, so you want a good uh, swivel on that where it's turning. Parallel the best you can, unless you got a partner, it's kind of hard to do, or they can jump up in front, but I like to try to parallel in this little bit deeper water. And now, usually what happens with this particular bait is when you pull it out of the shade and that blade hits the sun and gets a little sparkle on it, that's about when they usually hit it. <laughs> There's once in a while you can feel that thing tick the bottom, and you got to remember that you're using an exposed hook. With a spinner bait, you have that closed hinge, that safety pin type deal where the blades protect the hook. You don't have that on this particular bait. The blade's on the bottom. So you have that exposed hook, so you have to be really careful. Now the bite on this is a little bit slower. You could probably go to a drop shot and catch a lot of fish around those shad, catch some of those smaller fish, and maybe get a quality bite here and there. But it seems like throwing this particular bait with the breeze blowing like it is, um, the bite, you get a little bit better quality bites. Look at all that action down there. Some trees. This right here is, <laughs> this is kind of neat. But if you look right here on the graph, you got, we got some trees in, down there. And then you, you got the bass up here working. They're probably working some shad, but down in these trees a lot of times is where they're sitting. And what's really cool about this bait is when I throw it out there, I'm ticking the tops of those trees. You gotta be careful not to get right in them, but they're right there at the tops of those trees. Only took three or four times. It's a little guy. <laughs> I'm like, I knew something was biting it. I, it kept falling and I'd get hit. It kept falling, I'd get hit. Look at that, he about swallowed it. Fish that small, sm trying to swallow that bait. Always, always on these deep channels like this, like you have these deep cuts in the summertime or in the fall like this, you gotta hit them either with a topwater or something back there. Because they can push shad back there and they might not be hitting them on the surface, but it drops off pretty good, so you'd want to check it. Hey folks, for my tip of the week, one thing that's really important to remember, that when you're coming down a bank and you're catching fish off these points, don't be afraid to change the angle when you go by. If you know that point, if you think that point's a good point and you have followers and it just looks like a good point, Come back up the other way and give those fish a different angle. Give them something else to, to, uh, to strike at that bait with. Because I'll tell you what, a lot of times you'll be going down the bank, you might catch a fish and then turn around and come back and hit that point again. Show that bait in a different angle for the fish. Uh, give him an opportunity one more time, an, another fish to grab it. Because a lot of times there's a, more than one or two fish on these points. Doesn't happen all the time, but it's always worth a shot, especially after you caught a fish there. And uh, I went by there and had one actually follow it. I came back, I didn't catch him, but it's always best to try to give that, that different angle by coming back and trying to catch that fish and you might just catch it. <laughs> There's one, right off that point. Right off that point, don't you jump on me. Don't you jump on me. <laughs> I had enough of that already. Oh, that's a good fish. These are the quality bites you get. Look at that. You get a little bit better quality bite with that underspin. He tried eating it. Yeah, look, that fell right out. That's why you don't want them jumping like that. That big old head like that will get them every time. <laughs> that's the ticket right there, man. When that wind starts to blowing, and you're having a tough time, go to this bait right here. It's a lot of fun to throw. Not a lot of guys throw it. The bass here doesn't see this this often. I tell you, it's a fun bait to throw though. <laughs> I'm retying because I, I got hooked up there a little bit. So we'll retie. Let me back off a little bit here. 
I don't want to spook my fish. You notice that came off a of point too, and that's the deal, is we're coming around these bluffs, hitting these points, and that's where those bites are coming from. You know, we're getting enough wind, we're kind of sheltered from the wind right here, but it's booming in some of those areas that I'd love to go top watering in, but hey, you know, if, they're, if we're getting quality bites on this, the one thing that's really important to remember about this kind of fishing though, is to remember that when you start getting bit on this thing, figure out what retrieve you're throwing it on. If you're throwing in deep water, ledges like we're throwing here, and points, and you're throwing this half ounce, you'll find yourself wanting to reel a little bit faster than normal after you catch a fish, because you're excited like I get, you know? So in order to keep that from happening, you gotta just keep it in your mind that I gotta go slow. If you keep thinking you gotta go slow, cause man, I have a tendency, I know I get excited probably more than most, but I have a tendency to wanna start reeling a little bit faster. And with these fast retrieve ratio reels, you'll be reeling that thing faster and you find yourself not getting bit as often. You're like, what's going on? You wanna get it down there where they're at for sure. Boy, the one thing I love about this half ounce is it gets down there. But let me tell you something too. If you find yourself, in, and it's still windy, and those fish are hanging up on flats, you're going a little deeper into the fall, the water's cooling off a little bit better, and those fish are staying on the flats, pick up a quarter ounce. You don't have to throw a half ounce. You don't pick up a quarter ounce and throw it on the flats. That way you're not getting hung up as much. But regardless, I still like the slow retrieve when I'm doing this. If I'm gonna burn it, then I'm gonna pick up like a little dipper or a skinny dipper or something like that, and I'll, I'll go something like that. Well, the day's starting to wind down a little bit. Had a little bit of breeze today. I was hoping to get out here and throw some top water. The wind got to carrying away a little bit, but that's okay. We caught them on the fish head. Uh, they call it the fish head spin. It's basically an underspin, half ounce. Had a great time with it today. Caught quality fish, caught a few small ones, but it seems like you get the quality bites with that bait. And uh, I'll tell you what, it's a lot of fun to throw, something the fish haven't seen a lot of here. And uh, I'll tell you, you can grab that and have a lot of fun with it. Remember. 12 to 14 pound test line with that uh, in ultra clear water. And if you can get away with it, 14 for sure, fluorocarbon. You'll have a good time with it. Lake Pleasant has a lot to offer. When that wind gets to kicking, you can find coves to get out of the wind a little bit, but you, you, know, you can still make things happen. And that's what I love about this, this lake. It's got a lot of shad in it. Seems to have a lot of little bass I saw running around today as well. So, you know, it's gonna be a good lake. It's really low right now, but I think it goes low this time of year anyway and uh, it fluctuates a lot. But you know what? The fishing's really good in the fall here, so give it a try here at Lake Pleasant. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. I'm Johnny Johnson. <laughs> now, see, that's what I'm talking about, folks. <laughs>